So where the heck have I been? Uh, <laughs> I wanted to try it. I always wanted to try it. So I said, the hell with it. And I went out and outfitted myself and I've been on the hill pretty steadily for the last month and a half. All right, let me just get to the, the questions first of all. Yes, we're absolutely gonna talk about uh, the FX Crown in comparison to the FX Royale, but the biggest, grandest, most assertive question I've gotten is what happened to the spearfishing videos? I would very much like to sit down, have a beer with you, and tell you the full story of that. YouTube has become a complicated place. I'm always on the lookout for the next video hosting uh, site. Extreme bench rest. No, I didn't win this year. I did very well. Those who are saying that I, I fell on my face, you're full. I qualified first in my heat, second overall, and two shots better than last year. But when it came down to the 100 yard stuff, 100 meter stuff, I just pulled a bad lane. I will tell you all about that because I actually have analyzed my data. I had wind recorders out that day. I'll talk about that, but on the holdover vlog. The FX Crown's been out now for many months and there's been a lot of reviews on it. Matt, Steve did fantastic jobs reviewing this gun. I'm gonna approach it from a slightly different angle. I'm going to kind of relive the history and then move forward to the future. So I have my FX Royale right here, and uh, these are both 25 caliber guns. They both have some similar features. For instance, hammer adjustment. However, it's not very convenient on the Royale. It's back here, you have to take it out of the stock. It isn't like a, like a ball bearing, click, click, click. It's just a, a screw. So it is possible to adjust the hammer spring back here, um, but it, it's very clumsy compared to the very slick clickable and repeatable system on the crown. Next, valve adjustment. They both have this as well, and this hasn't changed all that much. On the Royale, it was right here. On the crown, it's in the same position. The difference is the crown is, again, a meatier, easier to grip knob, and it clicks a little better. The big thing the crown did was implement the regulator adjustment. And if you're thinking about buying this gun, you know the ramifications of being able to adjust the regulated pressure of your pre-charged pneumatic gun. And if you don't know it, I've already made a video on the holdover vlog and I'll put a link in the description. So the weight is sizably different. The Crown comes in at about seven pounds, the Royal about 8.6. One and a half pound difference. Doesn't sound like much, equates to quite a bit when you're holding, especially since the Crown's center of gravity has been moved significantly back toward this area, not so much this area. The two things that have created the reduction in weight are bottle and barrel, the two most forward things on the whole gun. The Crown has a carbon fiber bottle, my old Royal has a aluminum bottle. 480 cc, 500 cc. This one weighs about 0.8 pounds and this one weighs about 1.4, 1.5 pounds. Now, of course, the Royal's been available with the carbon bottle now for over a year, maybe two years. I'm just trying to relay the old school versus the new school. And the reason for that is this gun, the Royal, sold for the same amount as the Crown did. It's three years later, prices are the same, but the features are expanded considerably. We're getting more for our money, and that's a good thing. So that's the first major chunk of weight off the crown. Now the second one, and this one's big time, we're gonna spend a little bit of time on it. Ah, my props are right down here. That difference is the crown has a smooth twist X barrel. My Royal has a smooth twist barrel. This is a smooth twist X barrel. This is a smooth twist barrel. This weighs about five times more than this. The reason for that is the smooth twist barrel basically was a smooth bore all the way down and then there was what they call a twist. A lot of people said that the barrel was twisted at the end and a twisted end to the barrel. It's actually not true at all. The twist is actually pressed in rifling on the end of here. 
And here's what it looks like. If I unscrew this right here, you can see this thin portion of the barrel. So they have this big piece of steel, which is quite thick, and then they cut it down, including the threads into it, and now the metal here is thin enough to press that rifling into it. The Smooth Twist X is thin all the way up and down, and they press the rifling in a similar fashion, but now instead of just pressing it on the end, it can go the full length of the barrel. So how does the Crown take this smaller one and mount it in here? Well, there's actually a, a lighter weight sleeve that holds it in place. But it's not about weight difference, and they didn't make this change to try to lighten the gun. They made the change to move on to the next phase of progress and air gun rifling. So out to the range we go, and I'll show you the accuracy results for multiple pellets on these two guns. I have put MTC Viper Pros on both of them, and I used um, this, the side shot. I am going to spend as little time as possible out here because in less than two hours, the temperature is going to swing 25, 30 degrees here. That's 15 degrees Celsius. And it's already just miserable. Uh, let me show you the ceiling of this place. Those are water drips and they're falling on my head as I'm shooting. Um, so I'm going to take my shots here, skedaddle back home, and we'll talk about everything back home. So here are my targets for that day. So while we watch the footage of me taking them shots, let's talk about this. Smooth twist, no big surprises here. 25.4 grains right up here. 34 grain Mark 1s right here. H&N Barracudas down here in the corner. Over here is the Mark II 34 grains. Mark II seem to shoot well out of my Royal and my Crown. And in the middle here, just for fun, Benjamin Domes. Now the reason I chose Benjamin Domes as Crossman ammunition is a much harder alloy than JSBs. Here's the Smooth Twist X, and this is quite interesting to me. Once again, we have the 25.4 grains shooting lights out at 50 yards, well under a half inch, maybe even under 3 eighths of an inch. We have the Mark 1s, 34 grains. Back over here, again, the Mark 2, 34 grains shooting very well out of the Smooth Twist X. And now is where things get interesting because the Smooth Twist X shot the H&N pellets, the Barracuda match, quite well at 50 yards. And it even shot those damn Benji domes quite well. So back up a second, back to the Smooth Twist barrel, the original. These worked amazingly well, but as you all know, they only really worked with JSB lead. They're designed for JSB pellets. This barrel specifically was designed for the 25.4 grain. And the reason why they worked so well is because of the interaction of the rifling right here with the lead of the pellet. When you only have this much rifling, it is very, very important to get that interaction of the lead and the rifling perfect. And they did that. Enter the Smooth Twist X barrel. They can change that twist rate and they can change how hard they push the rifling in and they can change the choke and they can change where the rifling starts being engaged by the barrel itself. They can totally do whatever they want. The significance of that is quite significant because now they can start designing barrels for specific pellets. As of right now, the Crown was shipped with a barrel that is optimized for the, again, the JSB 25.4 grain. But those Barracudas, uh, they got potential. We might see them in the future. Okay, so finally the 100 yard stuff. And what we have here is what we would expect. The Crown barrel and tune that came out of the factory is designed for 25.4 grain JSBs, shooting about 880 feet per second. And of course, it lived up to that quite well, in spite of the lousy, <laughs> lousy conditions. I was getting rained on, huge drips are dripping down the back of my neck. 
A um, little bit windy, a little bit of back and forth. The rain, of course, is coming down and it's still put 10 in just over an inch. Over here, we had the 34 grain Mark IIs and about an inch and a half, maybe a little less than that. Then down here, we have the Royal shooting the 25 grains and shooting them quite well, exactly what I'm used to. But then things opened up a little bit with the Mark II Royals. Now, that could have been conditions, but I'm more inclined to think that it just maybe at longer ranges wasn't tuned perfectly for that pellet. And that's the truth because when I shot the crown, I was able to tune the crown to 830 feet per second with those Mark IIs. The Royal, I just shot at whatever it was at, which meant probably about 790 feet per second. Getting that speed, that interaction perfect between the barrel and the ammunition, so, so important. It can't be understated, overstated. Can't be overstated. <laughs> Crony data showed no massive improvement for the Crown. Both guns are putting out over 100 shots at, with a 25.4 grain. I had the Crown tuned just a little bit slower than the Royal. They both got about 108, 110 shots. The Royals had a little more power, but the Royal also has a bottle that is 20 cc's bigger than the carbon fiber bottle. So I think it was actually a wash. Now, as you can see, both guns are in black laminate. I go back and forth as to which stock I actually like better. This one has, uh, you know, probably more dynamic coloring. This one more subtle. It's all personal choice. This one does, however, have the, of course, the adjustable cheek rest, as well as, uh, butt plate that can slide up and down just like the Royal, but it can also kind of go back and forth on your shoulder too. Not kind of, actually, <laughs> go back. <laughs> the Crown also uses a larger magazine and it actually works quite well because the Crown breach, this spot right here is angled. That bigger magazine can kind of fit in off to the side. You can actually use even medium rings and still get that in there. The triggers on the two guns, they're both honestly identical. They butt up to the second stage and break in the same way. And of course they're adjustable if you want to tinker with it. I never do. They come from the factory perfect for the way I shoot. What is different is the cocking levers. Now the cocking lever on the Royal is longer than the cocking lever on the Crown. The Crown uses the same lever that the Impact used. Now this is a double-edged sword because some people have said that the cocking is actually smoother on the Royal. And the reason for that is you have actually more leverage. Whereas the Crown utilizes the shorter one, and while you do have to pull a smidge harder, you maintain a better shooting position in between shots. So I suspect they shortened the cocking lever because they thought that the trade-off, keeping your hand in a more ergonomic position, was better than making it ultra ultra easy to pull and I I agree with that when shooting the crown you can just do this but when shooting the royal you have to kind of it's kind of swings around it's a wider circle to cock it so for me the upgrade was an improvement now let's get on to one thing that I'm kind of torn about the looks of this shroud so much better than this shroud when it comes to sound dampening they're both equal but to get that sound dampening out of the crown you have to extend the telescopic shroud. Now that makes things quiet as hell. It locks in position. It works perfectly, but I still don't think that I like it. I don't want to see any of this damn barrel. I want a nice continuous shroud from A to B. This I didn't like. This I don't like. I know this is breaking the heart, of the owner of FX air guns right now because he's so proud of this. I would like FX to make a version of this without the telescopic shroud. And the 22 caliber has a non-telescopic shroud and it looks so good, so good. So why haven't I been shooting the crown as much as the impact? Well, the, the answer is quite simple on that. I like my impact, like the way it feels better. I've shot so many shots with that gun that it is an extension of my arm. Right now, I honestly think that my Impact 25 caliber with the original smooth twist barrel is still my most accurate gun, but I do not foresee it staying that way for very much longer. <laughs> they have just scratched the surface 
on what this technology can do. And I think in the next two to three years, we're going to be taking some big steps forward and, um, and I'm going to be following suit with the gun I choose for hunting, filming, and competition. That was a lot and arguably the most comprehensive, uh, overly comprehensive <laughs> gun review I've ever done. I hope you found it informational and, and maybe entertaining. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I promise I'll get back out hunting and filming when I have mastered uh, YouTube's new policies. All right, I think that's all I had to say. That's it from Wisconsin, USA. See you later, guys. That's quite enough of that. I don't like hanging out in this weather unless I have a chance of killing something. <laughs>